Hello, uh, welcome to the uh, WesterCon and Worldcon bids panel. This is actually one of the few items that is actually required to be held at this convention by our bylaws. Uh, the <coughs> any bids that are being chosen for WesterCon this year have to be given at least 15 minutes of program time if they wish to use it, and this is it. So we'll start in this first segment with bids for the uh, WesterCon two years since that's WesterCon 73. Uh, that will be that is being chosen at this convention, and uh, there is only one bid filed, and that is for SeaTac Washington. And here to discuss it and give a little presentation, followed by some questions and answers, is Sally Worley. Hi. Uh, after Rocon, I swore I would never chair a convention again. <laughs> here I am, <laughs> and it was because there was nobody bidding, and. Um, I'm one of these people, even a few years ago, and tried to do away with Westercon, rallied everybody to go to the business meeting and say, no, we don't want to get rid of Westercon. So I felt it was part of my duty and it's part of my pleasure to be able to, to run in another Westercon and keep, keep the traditions going. Um, we're bidding for um, July 2nd through 5th of 2020 at the Double Fist Hotel, which is held the last two Western Cons we've had in Seattle. We've had this many, the fifth one we've had. So, and a number of people that are working with me on it have been on all five of them and worked on it. So we feel fairly comfortable with being able to do a Western Con. We first uh, had our first one in, was Western Con 46 back in 1993. So we've been around for a while. Um, we have our first, we started in January, and we've had five months to bid, so we have not made t-shirts, we have uh, been conserving our money and all that. So um, we currently have a letter of intent from our hotel, and the first thing we will do, providing we win, <coughs> is sit down with the hotel and negotiate a contract. Because there's some things in the letter of intent we've already said, we want changed. Uh, other than that, we have not, we only have a few people that we are on the bid committee that will be officers of the convention. So uh, we're pretty open. We did not want to ask people to take jobs and do this before it was official that we had won. So we will have a fan table up on them, up on the second, second floor. Second floor. And so if anybody's interested in working for us, if anybody's interested in buying pre-supports, uh, come see us at the table. Please vote. Uh, I'll talk about that. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying please vote. Please vote. <laughs> and tonight we're going to be having a party in room 831. And it'll be about 830-ish. So um, everybody come and we can talk more about it. I but, Huh? I was being distracted by the doors and stuff. Did you right. say where? I had a double three. Yes, I did. Okay. No, I, miss, I, miss, no, I, I heard her say, I heard that she said where, but I didn't hear where. Okay. Say, it's at again. the Double Tree Hotel at C, right, opposite the SeaTac Airport. So it's easy to get to. It's very easy to get to. Um, it's on bus lines that run into downtown Seattle. Uh, you can get the shuttle from the hotel to the end of the light rail and get to Seattle, um, you can get all over town from that area. Yeah. So, um, I guess okay. Yeah. Well, see, hotel sounds familiar. Which other conventions have been there? Well, that's the home of No West Con. Yeah. So, and we've had two other Western Cons there. The NASDAQ we had was up the hill from it. And we've had Phil Cons in that hotel. Too. We've had, yeah, Phil Cons, the yeah, conflict. Um, uses has, has used that hotel and I think was using it last. Uh, they will go in with us. They're part of they're they're under our umbrella organization, the same as we are. And I've already talked to them and if we win the bid, they are willing to come in and not be a separate convention within our convention like so often that they are part of us. So it will be completely meshed together and worked together. So, can you do the presentation? Pretty much. Okay. Uh, for the record, 
Site selection voting opens at noon, correct? Right. Noon, and it's up on the second floor. On the second floor, <coughs> basically, it's the table at the end of the set of black tables, not the white tables. It's across, it's across the aisle from, from the, the white tables table. where, the, where all the fan tables are. Okay. Look for the ballot box. And it's open till 6 it's today? It's open noon to 6 today and tomorrow. Okay. And then it ends at 6 o'clock tomorrow, and that's the end. The results will be announced at the business meeting on Saturday morning. Uh, let me see, that's the official part. And I forgot to say at the beginning that, in case it wasn't obvious, this panel is being recorded by multiple people, as a matter of fact, and these recordings will be posted to YouTube. If you speak in this meeting, uh, in this uh, event, you, your voice is being recorded, your image may be recorded, you may appear on YouTube. Bear this in mind. We have about uh, yes. Uh, one one note. The voting fee is twenty dollars and is guaranteed to give you a supporting membership in whoever wins. That's right. Just <laughs> the you are you are required to pay twenty dollars in order to vote. You are buying a minute at least a supporting <coughs> membership in that WesterCon, regardless of who wins. Not an academic question for those of you who were at the 2011 Western Conference. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to move. I'll go on. To, uh, is this a question about process first, or is about the bid? No, it's actually a question about what's the pre-supporting membership and what does it get. Ah, then that is about. Okay, now we're going to move into the questions for the one bid. We've got about 10 minutes for that. So <coughs> the question was, what uh, is the pre-support pre cost, cost, and what will that get you if you pre-support and vote? Yes. Okay. There is a little grid that we will have if we win. But anyway, what it is is the, the pre-support. Pre-support is twenty dollars. You want to pre-oppose is thirty dollars. Friend of the bid is a hundred dollars. What that gets is we will also count your twenty dollars voting fee against your membership, and so what's left over for fifty dollars is what you will end up paying. So if you pre-support for twenty, you vote. You owe us ten dollars. Okay, thank you. A friend of the bid gets an automatic membership. Everybody who votes gets a supporting membership in the convention. So they would owe thirty dollars. No, they would. If for attending. Right, right. Then if they want to attend, it's another thirty dollars. Yeah. So pre opposed gets okay. you with pre no, membership. No, no. pre opposed is thirty dollars. It's thirty dollars. The final fee is 50, so right. if you pre-oppose and, 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 and vote, vote. And and vote. That's right. all the money you pay in counts towards your All the money you pay in counts towards your membership. There are no refunds if you overpay. Thank you for your donation. <laughs> <laughs> but, but voting doesn't get it. But is it tax deductible? No. Uh, no. <clears throat> no, it wouldn't be. Because it is a membership. It is not a donation. Right. Now, if you want to donate money to us, it probably is because we are a 501c3. Yeah. All right. Ask your tax me. Yes. Consult, Consult your tax professional. Another question. Yeah, I read online that um, that area was having problems with parties and alcohol, and I never saw a conclusion. Um, I, don't know, I wasn't sure whether it was a hotel policy or a new law or what, and I really appreciate it. You would talk to us a little bit about that because I'm very confused. The question is about uh, the, the, the situation with parties and hospitality events at that hotel and how it affects this convention. Okay, my answer is yes, we have some problems. We are currently working with them. Uh, we have a local small con sort of thing it's called Con Con Con, and we had representative from the Washington Liquor Cannabis. The control <laughs> and he gave us some pointers of things we can do so we are looking into that the hotel is willing to work with us and so um, we're not alone in the area with this problem right so they've gotten really kind of nasty but the guy that did it was very helpful we can call him and, and find out about it he said our major thing is to, to uh, convince the legislature that we're not weddings. Because that's where the laws are based on. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. That explains a lot. So we are working on it. We have two years, 
And he says the big thing would be to start hitting our legislators. <laughs> so we're getting a group together to actually do that. I'm sorry, what, what, what is the problem? The problem is they are tightened down really, really tight on um, getting permits. And they right now have a law or a, a policy. It's not a law. They're just interpreting the policies and they can be interpreted in many different ways. Right now their policy says that there can only be one permit per address. Now a hotel has one address for every single room in the hotel. And that is the problem. So the, the ways around it is we can find an organization who's willing to take on all the parties, own the permit, and then the parties are under them, and they're responsible. Or the convention can take out the permit, and then we're responsible for all the parties. We could also, like we said, try to change the rules in the legislature, because he, he was very nice, because he said he had never talked to science fiction or types of conventions, and he said it was a real eye-opener for how different we are from other parties. So we have time to work with them. Yes, next question. Does that, does, does this part, part, I'm a little confused, I apologize. Does this policy involve like all parties or just parties that serve alcohol? All parties. All well, no, well, no, no it's, excuse it's me, alcohol. Parties, it's parties that have alcohol because it's, it's the alcohol board that's dealing with it. It's the alcohol, yeah, yeah. alcohol, yeah. And they also control the cannabis. So in other words, so in other words right. any party that just throws regular parties, no alcohol, right. regular Right, they don't soda. have any problem. Yeah, okay. so it's only if you're intending to serve alcohol that becomes an issue. Next question. It's more of a comment. Uh, in 2011, WesterCon at that hotel, um, I uh, was very mobility limited. Um, I told them when I made the reservation for the room, and they put us at the elev elevator furthest from the convention within the hotel, which meant it was about a three-city block. We got to our room, and I realized there was no way I could stay in that room and attend the convention because it was just way past my ability to walk. Oh. Please work with the hotel to make sure they understand what mobility limited means. Want to address that? Gene, do you have an answer to that? Um, what I generally like doing, and it will be on the website, is when you make your reservation, if you email hotel at westercon73.org or whatever, giving us this email, um, I'll place your room personally. Okay. The, the answer is, the recommended answer to this is make your hotel, if you have mobility issues, we don't did make, that at the time we made the reservation. Make, I'm making the, telling the hotel and the convention. Jim, I'll take care of it, okay? okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, uh, we just got a couple more minutes before we end this seg segment. Which one? Seattle. 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 Just a couple more minutes here for the Seattle bid for WesterCon. Are there any other questions? If not, I think uh, that's it for this segment. Okay. Thank you.